here with a good friend, Adam Mizrahi. His title is way too long, so I'm going to just let him just say, say it because that makes it much easier for me. So go go ahead and, and tell tell them your, your your title. Right now, first assistant, uh, working with a set designer, mostly with still photography, but there is definitely a mix of motion in there. Um, and it's a mixture of set design where we're doing a lot of building and then also uh, prop master because we're bringing props along with the sets that we build. Perfect. I couldn't have said that better. <laughs> uh, so. Last time I saw Adam, he abandoned me at a football game, uh, <laughs> for a very good reason, obviously. At a bar. <laughs> at a bar, uh, and didn't answer my phone calls. But I'm glad to have you back here. And this we, is we found me. The, <laughs> the first one on my show, so this is going to be great for season two. Uh, so I guess to just start with the, the general questions, just uh, your story, kind of where you're from, and you know how you got to New York City uh, in the role that you're in now. Sure. Well, I'm from Baltimore originally, and back in Baltimore for about seven years, I had a construction company. And along the way with the construction company, uh, someone, a girlfriend's father handed me a camera, fell in love with filmmaking, and then went from construction to filmmaking slowly. And uh, that was in Baltimore. And once I started working on some larger things in Baltimore, as large as they can get in Baltimore, um, I had a little love affair with a producer that then took me to LA and then finished taking me to New York. Large love affair. Large love affair. And then that took me to New York and now we're no longer together. So that's what brought me to actually LA and New York. At the same time, obviously being in love with filmmaking, now in New York, which is always beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> not, not this time of year, but. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so now I'm in New York and obviously doing a different role as a set designer rather than out there. I went from being a camera op, assistant camera, a lot of uh, grip and electric work, and even editor. So I've kind of dabbled in way too much stuff. Great, and I think we definitely have that in common, just a master of, of all different types of skills. Speak to a, a little bit on the subject of, so you came from construction and now you're doing set design, which is interesting because I think set design has so much to do with that particular skill set and you found a way that, that basically film and that type of work kind of mesh. So have you really found that those skills have really kind of come into play when you're building, I mean, you've built all kinds of things. Your, your Facebook feed is usually like, oh, we built this giant cabana for this, <laughs> this ad for Abercrombie or something like that. And I'm always seeing that kind of stuff. Uh, would you agree that's kind of really meshed the two pretty well? Yeah, I mean, when I met the guy that I'm working with now, um, I had, you know, maybe 10 years of experience building at that point. So I literally walked into a job where he didn't have to tell me much except for uh, we'd like to build this and then, and then I would just start building. So having the construction background obviously was huge. I mean, I was doing kitchens and bathrooms and things like that before, but you know, when you have a certain skill set and you kind of have it mastered to a certain point, it like you're like, okay, this is your challenge, let's go do it. So yes, that was a huge help um, just to have the construction background even though as we talk about this, I, you know, this was never my dream to, to be a set designer. <laughs> right. It's just a great gig that I have it here right now. Um, and I'm not going to not, you know, stick with something that is, we are at a high level with, you know, the clients that we're working for. When I was doing all the film stuff, I would dabble in higher level clients. Um, and it's always a great experience, as you know, just uh, how you deal with, you know, not even the shooting part of it, but just everything involved with dealing with high end clients. And to just, the way I look at it is to be able to be around that right now in any capacity is you're almost like a spy within the industry and that, not in a negative way, but you right. get to see how things are done. I mean, you're, you're, you're in a, a, a falcon's nest. I mean, you can see a lot from up there and it's, yeah. you're just trying to absorb as much as you possibly can because you might be rolling around in the gutter a couple months later. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not just saying you would, but you never know. Your situations change and you, you, know, you might evolve and want to do something else. Absolutely. Um, all right, well, so talk to me a little bit about where you acquired a little bit of your technical skill because you're, you're a very handy guy. You know so many different things about about the film process. Uh, just speak a little bit on, on that um, kind of where you acquired the skills, how you kind of honed them, and kind of where you're at now. Um, really everything, and even the construction, was all, um, it would be a mix between maybe one mentor in each scenario, and then mostly the internet, which a lot of people are doing now, where obviously you can just pull up any type of video on the internet and teach yourself something. Um, when it comes to filmmaking, and a lot of things, 
you can only take that so far by watching something until you actually do it. But yeah, I mean, really everything I know, which is you know a mixture between construction skills and that would include even plumbing and electric, like I know all that kind of stuff, all was obsessively watching internet videos for hours and days and like, you know, editing everything. Like basically the way my mind works is if I like something, I obsessively will get into it and it just, it's fun to like challenge yourself.